Hey, it's Mark Grabowski. I'm a journalism professor at Adelphi University and a columnist for the Washington Examiner. And in this video, I'm going to address how you can become a professional journalist. What sort of skills, education, and experience do you need to succeed? Being a journalist can be a great job. Every day is a new day. You're constantly learning new things and meeting new people. And you can serve an important role in society by giving the public information they need to make important decisions. But journalism can also be stressful, and it is extremely competitive to break into. Many aspiring journalists dream of being a famous news anchor on CNN or a New York Times reporter. But getting there requires a lot of hard work, talent, and some luck. So let's talk about how you can get there. First, we'll address what you should study if you're interested in becoming a journalist. Believe it or not, you don't need to major in journalism. I didn't. My college didn't even have a journalism program. You absolutely must be a good writer, however. Even if you plan to go into TV journalism, writing is still really important because you'll need to be able to write broadcast scripts. Just as an accountant needs to be great with numbers, journalists need to be the best with words. If you're not a strong writer, then journalism probably isn't the best career option for you. If you have the opportunity, I think it's useful to take some basic journalism courses like intro to journalism or news writing so that you can learn the fundamentals of journalism. It would also be good to take courses that will teach you multimedia skills. While being a good writer is the most important skill to have as a journalist, it's not the only skill you need. These days, journalists need to be able to do it all. They need to be able to report the news in print, online, and in front of a camera. In recent years, some newspapers have laid off great writers because they need journalists who can also shoot videos and make podcasts. So if you're a student at Adelphi, I'd take courses like video production, podcasting, data visualization, and drone photography, which are all offered through the communications department, incidentally. If you have the time and opportunity, you might also take courses like business journalism or sports journalism, because you may have to cover a variety of topics when you're starting out in the field. If you're unable to take these courses, don't fret. It's not the end of your dream. You'll just have to learn on your own by buying books on Amazon.com or, or watching videos on YouTube. Now, as I mentioned, my college did not have a journalism program. So you may be wondering, how did I break into the field? Well, I did internships. I did lots of internships. Internships are really the most important thing if you want to become a journalist. You could have a perfect 4.0 GPA, straight A's. But if you don't have good internship experience and work samples, you won't get hired. In fact, I was never asked my GPA when I applied for a journalism job. Instead, media outlets wanted to know where I had interned or worked before, and they wanted to see stories I wrote. A really useful way to gain experience is by working for student media to start out with. At Adelphi University, for example, there's a student newspaper and a radio station, and they're always looking for students to join. So you can get experience and build a portfolio by working for student media in your free time. And then you can parlay that experience into an internship. Most communities have newspapers you can intern at, especially if you're willing to intern for free. In Garden City, uh, New York, where Adelphi is located, we have uh, weekly newspapers like the Garden City News and Garden City Life. There's a large daily newspaper, Newsday, which covers the community along with the rest of Long Island. There's also News 12, which is a TV news station that covers Long Island. And there are radio stations as well. Some internships even pay. You really want to do as many internships as possible while you're in college because many of the students you'll be competing against for jobs will have done multiple internships, not just one internship. And on this screen, uh, there are some websites uh, I listed that are helpful for finding a journalism internship. They also list journalism jobs. Universities such as NYU and UC Berkeley have great sites that list opportunities. You can also check out job sites such as Craigslist and Indeed.com. In addition, there are journalism organizations such as Ed2010 and the Society of Professional Journalists that list opportunities. In Long Island, the Society of Professional Journalists uh, has a local chapter known as the Press Club of Long Island, 
or PCLI.org, and they sometimes post jobs and internships and networking events. One thing you can do uh, to help with the internship and job search is to create a personal website. These days, most job applications are done online. You may apply through a job site or email uh, a hiring editor, so you need to have your resume and work samples digitized. If you have a website, then you'll have all the stuff in one place and ready to go. Plus, if a potential employer Googles you, as many companies often do when they consider hiring someone, your website will likely come up first in the Google results. And because you control the content on your website, you can show off your skills and accomplishments. You get to decide what goes on your website, so you can put your best foot forward. Now, I realize you may not know the first thing about building a website. The good news is you don't need to. There are platforms such as Wix.com and Weebly.com that allow anyone to build a website for free and they are very easy to use. You don't need to know how to code and you can make a professional looking website like the one I have here on the screen overnight. Now what about journalism school? Some universities offer a master's degree in journalism. After you graduate college, should you consider going to graduate school to study journalism? Again, I did not get a master's in journalism. I think if you do what you need to do during undergrad, you don't need to go to graduate school for journalism. A graduate degree in journalism is like chicken soup. It certainly can't help hurt. It can only help. But considering that the top programs now cost $100,000 or more per year, it's a big investment. If you decide your senior year of college that you want to be a journalist, but you haven't taken any journalism courses, or done any internships, then you may need to go to graduate school and get your master's in journalism. But if you get the training you need in undergrad and are able to find an entry-level job you like, then it probably doesn't make sense to spend time and money on a master's degree in journalism. Besides education and experience, the last thing you need to succeed in journalism is the right attitude. There's a joke in journalism that goes something like, as a journalist, I've been yelled at, cursed at, spit on, had doors slammed in my face, and that's just by my editor. In other words, journalism can be a challenging career. So you need to be resilient and thick-skinned. You should never be content with your work product. You should always be seeking feedback and trying to improve. Because the profession is full of ambitious people, um, if you want to get ahead, then you need to be constantly trying to improve yourself. As an editor once told me, the only way to become a better writer is to have someone rip your work to shreds. So you got to be thick skinned and humble. It's also important to be aggressive in pursuing stories and opportunities. Things won't fall in your lap. You know, be ready to encounter setbacks. For example, you may have to apply for a bunch of internships or jobs just to get one interview. You can't cherry pick when you're starting out. It's good to, you know, dream big, but you also need to be realistic. You might have to toil at a small newspaper or work in a small TV market for, for years before you can land a job at a prestigious news company. When you're applying for internships and first jobs, be as flexible as possible. Don't just limit yourself to legacy media like the Washington Post and CBS News. Cast a wide net. You know, uh, don't just apply for jobs in a certain market. If you only apply for jobs in, say, New York City or Washington, D.C., your options will be very limited and you might not land a job. Almost every journalist wants to work in those places. Uh, but if, you know, you're willing to apply for jobs in North Carolina or Idaho, you're going to have a lot more options. Be aware that while some anchors make millions of dollars, many journalism jobs have low pay, extremely low pay in some cases. It's also not the most secure profession. Journalists get laid off from jobs very often. But the good news is that journalism gives you a lot of skills that makes it possible to pivot to other professions. Many journalists, for example, have used their media knowledge to work in public relations. Some journalists have become successful lawyers, uh, in large part due to their superior research and writing skills. After working as a newspaper reporter for five years, I became a lawyer, for example, and now I'm a professor.
So journalism can be a stepping stone rather than a millstone. Most importantly, and perhaps best of all, remember that journalism is more than just a job. So if you enter the field with a passion, it can be a very rewarding profession. On a final note, I want to address the 800-pound gorilla in the room, and that is coronavirus, or COVID-19. You may be wondering if it's worth it uh, to apply for journalism programs, internships, or jobs with everything closed down. And the answer is yes. First of all, journalism never stops. Even during this crisis, many journalists have been busy working, trying to keep the public informed about what's going on. And while some colleges have gone online, actually many colleges have gone online, and uh, many media outlets have implemented hiring freezes, things will eventually return to normal. In addition, some media outlets are offering remote or virtual internships. Obviously, journalism works best when you're able to go out into the world and talk to people in person, and then come back to the newsroom and get guidance from your editor. But you can still do journalism from home, even during these difficult times, as long as you have a computer and a cell phone. So keep sending out your resumes, build that website, and get on editor's radars. And look for interesting stories that you might be able to do right now that you can cover remotely and possibly get published in, in your local newspaper or some news site. Well, I wish you good luck in all your endeavors. Once again, this has been Professor Mark Grabowski. Thanks for watching.